Welcome to episode two of the Head in the Clouds video series. I'm Ken Hartman, certified SANS instructor and content creator for the SANS Cloud Security Curriculum. Our episode today is Non-Public Buckets Can Still Leak Information. We've all heard the horror stories about misconfigured Amazon S3 buckets that expose millions of customer records and other sensitive information. Something you may not know is that a bucket that is not public can still expose sensitive information. How? By the name of the bucket. I once had a client that had created a bucket for every one of their customers and thereby leaked their entire customer list. Granted, this is not the most serious issue in the cloud, but let's take a look and you may learn some more about AWS S3 in the process. Imagine for a moment that we're a company called Acme Manufacturing. I always like to use Acme from the Roadrunner cartoons that I watched on Saturday morning when I was a kid. Let's also imagine that we plan to create a bucket for each of our customers. And let's say that our first customer is Walmart. So let's make a bucket for Walmart. And now let's upload some sensitive information to that bucket. In the AWS Web Console, we can see that the URL to our data is displayed. Next, let's attempt to open this link in a new browser window. And I always like to use an incognito window just to make sure that in Chrome that the session data is no longer in memory to authenticate me to AWS. And we notice that we see an access denied message. Well, that's expected. It is not a public bucket after all. Let's change the name of the file that we're trying to access to customer data to. That also shows that access is denied. Let's try by removing the file name from the URL. Access denied, okay. But what if we change the name of the bucket? Let's change it from Walmart to Kmart. Now here we're seeing that it says that the specified bucket does not exist. Interesting. Now we are getting a different error message, and this is a variation of a user account enumeration attack. For more information, I've included a hyperlink to the OWASP, the Open Web Application Security Project, that discusses testing for account enumeration and guessable user accounts. But in this case, what we're doing is we're guessing for the existence of specific bucket names. Because we can get different error messages, we now have a means to enumerate the buckets for customer names. Rather than using a browser, let's use curl. There's our access denied message. Now let's try it with Kmart. Ah, a 404 not found error. So note that the HTTP response codes are different. We can tweak our command to return just the HTTP response code. We could even parameterize the customer name and create a for loop. Interesting. We can see the expected response codes for Kmart and Walmart, but it looked like Acme made their Walgreens bucket public. And what's going on with the Acme customer's Aldi bucket? Well, let's run the curl command again and fetch the complete response for Aldi. That is nice of Amazon. 
not only do we now know that the bucket exists, but that it is hosted in Frankfurt, Germany region, EU Central 1, because it uses that as the S3 endpoint rather than Northern Virginia, which uses s3.amazonaws.com. More potentially useful recon info. Today's topic builds on the work of Robin Woods, aka Digi Ninja, and his bucket finder tool. And there's been a variety of other bucket scanning tools, but for today's topic, I wanted to make sure that people understood how these tools work under the covers. And lastly, some important takeaways. It is generally unwise to have guessable bucket names. For example, a bucket name of Acme Customers Walmart 28290135678392 would be better as long as that numerical string that is appended to the end is random and not something like your AWS account number. It would also be better to avoid using meaningful words altogether, names such as Acme, Walmart, or even customers for bucket names. Remember that you can always use tags, and tags are not exposed via DNS. After all, there's nothing wrong with a bucket named CX28102354. Assuming that it is unique across the global namespace. If you do want to have meaningful names and phrases, do that at the folder level inside a bucket, as folders are not exposed by default, like bucket names are. And lastly, remember that just because a bucket name contains the name of a well-known company doesn't mean that the bucket is controlled by that company. In the examples that I used in today's talk, I created buckets for a few top retailers, even though I have no affiliation with any of them. And that's it for today's episode. If you have thoughts or comment on today's show, feel free to chime in on our moderated Google group by shooting a note to headinthecloudsecurity at googlegroups.com. Tune in next time for another installment of Head in the Clouds as announcements of new episodes are made on the SANS Cloud Security Twitter feed. And meanwhile, be sure to check out the other great videos that SANS has to offer on the SANS Cloud Security YouTube channel. Take care.